Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Some of you may know that I've been working on this humongous course on Lightroom Classic. The course is going to consist of over 50 how-to training videos, well over 50 downloadable PDFs, and all of those raw files that I'll be using in the videos, you'll be able to download those as well so you can work along at home. I'm nearing the home stretch and I'm about ready to sell it, so I want to give you a little more information about the course and give you a little bit of a preview of the course. Most importantly, I've decided to sell the course for $99. Those of you who subscribe to my newsletter will get a discount. If you don't already subscribe to my newsletter, there is a link in the description below this video so you could sign up. I anticipate going live with this course within the next couple of weeks. I will be announcing an exact date in my newsletter. I will update the course for at least a year. What I mean by that is if Adobe adds anything new to Lightroom or changes anything, about Lightroom, I will do videos on it so you can be sure that you'll have access to the latest training. And finally, I'm going to be signing up affiliates to help me sell the course. If you're a company and you're interested in becoming an affiliate of mine to help me sell the course, contact me via the email address on my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video. Without further ado, allow me to give you a preview of the course. This is the video in the course on the effects panel in Lightroom Classic. I hope you find it helpful. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the effects panel found in Lightroom Classic. The effects panel is probably the easiest panel to use and the easiest panel to understand in Lightroom, but that doesn't make it any less useful. With the effects panel, you could apply two different effects to an image. One is a vignette and the other is grain. Let's start with vignette. When you look at the panel, the top part of the panel is for vignetting. It's called post-crop vignetting. And there's actually two different types of vignettes you could apply to an image. If you go to the amount slider and move it to the right, you'll apply a light vignette. If you move it to the left, you'll apply a dark vignette. Once you apply your vignette, you could change the way the vignette looks with the following sliders. Go to the midpoint slider, and push it to the right, and you'll push the vignette more towards the edges of the image. Pull it to left, and you'll pull the vignette more towards the middle. To reset any slider, just double click right on the slider. Roundness, if I push that to the right, I'll create a rounder vignette. If I pull it to left, I'll make a more rectangular vignette. Feathering, if I want it more heavily feathered, move it to the right. If I want a harder edge, move it to left. Now, highlight slider, what does that do? Well, that really depends on what style you're using. By default, you'll be using highlight priority. If I go to this dropdown and open it up, you'll see there's also color priority and paint overlay. Let's start with this highlight priority and let's go to a different image so I could better show you what that highlight slider does. If I go to this image, it's a totally white image, and I apply a dark vignette. I'm in the highlight priority style and I go to this highlight slider and move it to the right, it takes the vignette away. What it's actually doing, it's allowing the brightest parts that are in the original image to come through the vignette. In this case, since the image is totally white, it's allowing all of that to come through. Now in a real world situation, if you have something like this, where you have this image that has white clouds in the sky, you may want those white clouds to bleed through a little more. Go to that while you're in this highlight priority style, go to the highlight slider, move it to the right, and you'll start to see those clouds bleed through. Now it's not just taking the vignette totally away, it's just allowing the clouds to bleed through. Also down here, you can see there's a white part of the boat, this buoy over here. If I move this to the right, it's allowing those to come through a little more. So anything that is lighter in the image, when you move the highlight slider to the right, when you're in highlight priority style, it'll allow that to come through a little more. So if you have an image and you apply to vignette and it looks like it's a little too dark on the clouds, it doesn't look right, push this to the right and it will make those clouds a bit brighter. That's all you need to do. What about some of these other styles? Let's go to this image. This is just a totally blue image. And let's go to color priority. Let's again put on a maximum dark vignette. Let's go to this highlight slider and move it to the right. Look at it's taking the color away or the vignette away. Not totally though. You can see it's there just a little bit. So you're saying, well, that's not much different than the highlights one, right? Well, let's go to a red image. Again, apply a maximum dark vignette. And again, 
take this highlight slider to the right. Now it's not taking as much of that vignette away or not allowing as much of the red to come through the vignette as it did the blue. Now, similarly, I could go to this white, change it to color priority and go to this highlight slider and it will allow the white to come through. So what does all this mean? Well, this is really color priority is more for landscape images when you have sky in it. So if you have an image that has like sky in it like this, and you want more of the blue sky and more of the white clouds to come through, change the style to color priority. And you can see it will allow more of that to come through. So that's all that is. Usually when I apply a vignette, I apply a dark vignette because I feel that if I darken the edges of an image, it will help push everyone's gaze more towards the middle, the brighter part of the image in the middle. Um, and I just use highlight priority. I very rarely will use any other of these styles unless I'm not getting what I want with highlight priority. I just don't like the way it looks. Now, as far as paint overlay is concerned, that's the third style. That is as though you just had a paintbrush and you painted around the ed uh, edges. You'll notice the highlight slider is grayed out totally. You can't move that at all. That's because it's as though you just applied paint. There's no ability for you to allow any part of the original image to come through. So that is paint overlay. And again, typically I normally use highlight priority. And then what I do, let me reset this. What I usually do, how I apply a vignette, and again, I usually apply a darker vignette, is I'll take the mount slider, move it to left. Then I want to change the way it looks. I'll go to the midpoint slider, and instead of just moving it around and trying to guess what it's doing, is I'll hold in the Alt Option key, and when I do that, it will temporarily give me a maximum dark vignette. And by the way, if I had a light vignette on, and I hold in the Alt Option key, it'll temporarily give me a light vignette. So in this case, I had the dark vignette, right? So then I go in and I adjust the midpoint. Then I'd go to the roundness slider, again, hold in that Alt Option key and click, and then adjust that. And then go to feathering, again, hold in that Alt Option key and adjust that. Then I could go to the highlight slider and hold in that Alt Option key. And again, it will give me that max and I could see what I'm doing there as well. And that's the way I go about applying a vignette. I use the Alt Option key on the midpoint roundness feather and highlights, and I'm almost always using a highlight priority style vignette. That's really it for vignetting. What about rain? Well, let's go to this image here. Uh, this image is a digital image. It was shot in color. Um, so let me give you a before after. There's before, it's a color image, and there's after. I just processed it into black and white. And if you want to give an image a film look, this is where you would apply grain. Now, what I like to do is I like to zoom in. I click on somewhere like here. And to tell you the truth, though, I very rarely will add grain to an image. But if I did, I would zoom in and I would push the amount up. And you could see the more you push it to the right, the more grain you're adding. Now, you could change the way that grain looks with the size. You could make the granules, for lack of a better term, larger by moving it to the right, smaller to the left. It's pretty obvious. And the roughness, move it to the right and you'll give it a rougher look and to the left, a less rough look. So. There's no like modifier key to hold in like we did with the vignette when I held in the alt option key. There's no modifier key you could hold in to help you better apply grain to an image. It's really just visual, just eyeballing it, looking at it, and applying the grain the way you want it to look. Sometimes it's better to zoom out a little bit like that. And just move those around until you get the look you want. So it's really all visual as far as grain is concerned. Just look at the image and see, you know, until it looks good. Move those sliders around until it looks good. That's it. That's the effects panel in Lightroom Classic.